to fellow marketers, Professor Walters here, and today we are here in Vienna, Austria. And today we want to talk about one of the things that companies do and firms do in order to analyze kind of the, the desirability of going to certain international markets. So how do we kind of evaluate markets? Now, we have a video on looking at the social cultural stuff. We have a video on economics. We have a video on, on other things. But what we need to look at today is actually the legal, political kind of stuff that might influence us if we're going to be going into a new market, okay? Or maybe if we're going to do business with certain countries and things like that. Now, what I want to talk about are a few kind of things that governments do do that do influence business in terms of international business. And one of the things is they might be limiting the flow of goods to a country, and that could be one, they could have a quota. And what a quota does, it sets a limit on the total number of products that can be brought in from a certain country. Usually it's probably a certain kind of product. So they might say, you know, only 50,000 Toyotas are allowed to come into Austria. I mean, that's a lot of, a lot of cars that come here, but they're making a limit, only 50,000. Now the thing is, that hurts domestic consumers, because imagine if you're the 50,000 and first person in Austria that wants to buy a, a Toyota, you're kind of out of luck, okay? Now on the other side of it, it actually helps the domestic producers because the domestic producers in the European Union that are making cars, haha, now that 50,000 and first person has to buy one of our Skodas or our Volkswagens or something like that. So you have those things. But a quota, at least you get to bring something in. Sometimes countries have what are called boycotts where they will allow no products from that country, okay? So like in the US, you might have a boycott on North Korean goods or Iranian goods or sometimes Cuban goods and things like that. And if somebody wants to get a Cuban cigar and you're in the US, too bad, it's totally a boycott. So of course the domestic consumer is the one that's missing out. Now, if you're gonna be buying like cigars made in the US, good for you. Hey, that domestic producer, hey, we're getting all that desired demand. They wanna buy the Cuban cigars, they can't, they gotta buy from us. So that's the thing there, okay? So remember, quota, set limit, you know, of a certain number and boycott is completely nothing's there. Now another thing you probably hear a lot about in the news are tariffs. And what a tariff is, is when a government imposes a tax on a product coming into the country, okay? So if I'm trying to bring in, let's say, wool from Britain, okay? Let's say it costs $10 for that wool in Britain, but the thing is, I'm putting a 20% tax on that. Well, now that wool, when it comes and, and the people in the U.S. want to buy it, well, instead of it being $10, it's going to be $12 because they put a 20% tariff on there. So it makes everything more expensive. And the thing is, a lot of times governments will say is, we'll put those tariffs to show those other governments that, that they should do stuff. Well, the thing is, is, is that other government paying the tax and the tariff? No, they're not. It's the domestic consumer that has to pay the higher price. So they're losing out because they got to spend more money because you know what? I want to have my soccer tour from here in Austria. I don't want it from the US. I want it to be shipped there. And so I'm kind of missing out on that. Or I want that, that, I want that British wool from Scotland. I want that. And so I'm going to willing to pay more for it. Now, for domestic producers in the US, if we look at the wool thing, hey, it's good for them because if we were, you know, think about it, if we were $10 wool versus $10 wool and someone wanted Scottish wool, so they can say, oh, I have Scottish wool on. Well, now all of a sudden it was equal. So hey, they'd buy the Scottish wool, but now it's 20% more expensive. Now that domestic produced wool looks more affordable and people buy that more. So it actually helps the domestic producer. But again, the domestic consumer is the one that loses out. Now the thing is, not all government actions actually bad for the domestic consumers. These just few first few ones I was kind of talking about. There's another thing you might see, what we call trade agreements. You might agree with things like NAFTA, or North American Free Trade Agreements, where it's free trade of goods between Canada, Mexico, and the U.S., and so we can get goods and services going around. The European Union, where you know you can be born in Portugal and work in Germany and then retire in Spain. You can move all over, but also you can move your money all over. You can compare prices in different places buy there and stuff like that. So it makes it really easy for me, people to go places, businesses to work in multiple locations. Cause hey, we make it so there's no extra tariffs, no extra problems. It's good for our domestic consumers because now think about it. If I'm here in Austria, now I can get all those tasty Italian pastas here. I can get those German sausages. I can get those Finnish sweets that come down that are so good. I can have those in and there's no tariffs, there's no limits, nothing like that because we have that trade agreement. And then you'll have what are called exchange controls. And so what exchange controls do is they might limit the amount of financial like money flowing from different between countries. So sometimes what you might see is a currency control. Some countries don't let you take money out of their country. Well, if I can't take my money or my profits out of the country, why am I going to invest more there? I might not do that. So that kind of turns people off. 
And so sometimes what companies do is they work with what are called transfer pricing. So let's say I'm a company and I can't get my money out of this country, so I'll hire one of my consultants from my firm back in their US branch. Have them come to Austria and then I'll charge you know $100,000 for their services because the people are doing work for us and then that money can flow back to our country that way. But taking the actual profits out, sometimes exchange controls kind of eliminate that. So it makes it a little bit more difficult to get it out there. Um, also, sometimes it might be a limit about how much money people can exchange. I know, think about it, your local bank, when you take money out of the ATM, might put a limit, only $500 a day or 500 euros a day. Well, what if you want to spend more money? You can't, you're limited at what you can do. Now imagine that for a big company, it can really limit what they can do. And so what they might end up doing is deciding, you know what, I'm not going to work in that market because it's not worth it because all of the exchange controls and issues like that, and that could be some things. And also sometimes government actions might mean that you have to work with other companies, so you might be forced into doing a, a joint venture. And if I have intellectual property I don't want to lose, do I want to have to work with somebody else and they might steal my ideas? And there's all kinds of things you have to think about in terms of government regulation and all this kind of stuff, which will affect you when you're analyzing an international market to decide if that's a place that you want to go. Okay. Now we have a lot more information on here going over the economic side of things, the social cultural side of things all on our website. Also, you can check it out here on our YouTube channel, Professor Walters. Just search for the marketing bar and you'll find all kinds of the marketing playlist. You'll find all kinds of marketing videos to help you out. We've also got videos on YouTube stuff, how to teach, all kinds of good fun business things. So do check it out. We do appreciate your likes and subscriptions. Sorry for the wind and the rain, but I'm here wandering through Vienna and I thought this would be a good place to talk about international trade because this was the hub of international trade back in the day. Anyway, I'll say bye from Vienna.